Welcome back to Self Love Ignited. Today on the podcast, I'm interviewing Emily Nahazel, and we talk about Emily's self love journey. And we talk about how she used astrology and human design, used and still uses astrology and human design, both in her career, in her business, but also for herself on this journey. It is really fascinating. And these are tools that nobody else has really spoken about before on the the podcast. So this is a new thing. Emily is an intuitive career coach who believes that we all deserve to spend more time doing what we love. I can't wait for you to meet Emily and find out more. Here she is. My name is Katie Allen, and this is Self Love Ignited. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Self Love Ignited. Today I am interviewing Emily Nahazel, and I hope I said your name right. Fingers crossed. I think I did. Um, Today (laughs) I'm interviewing Emily. Emily, I'm really excited to have you here and to get into your story and learn a little bit more about you. So why don't you just take a moment and introduce yourself to everybody? Sure. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Katie. And so welcome or hello. (laughs) Welcome. I'm like used to hosting things. Uh, I'm Emily. I'm an intuitive career coach. And what that means is that I help folks, mostly folks who are interested also in the spiritual side of things, find work that more aligns with their souls, with their spirits. And I use tools like astrology and human design in my work because these tools were so transformational for me in finding this role and doing work that I love. Um, And I think that my my career story very much connects to my self-love story. They're, They're deeply intricate intricately connected. Uh, So excited to share a little bit more about that today. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely want to hear more. And I know when you and I connected, you know, the the first time when we talked, you know, a few weeks back, we talked a bit about this and I was like, I don't know anything. This is, so it's really fascinating for me on a personal level. Um, But also, yeah, I'm really, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing sort of your, your whole story and how they connect, because I think inevitably they do, right? Like, I think as human beings, we are so complex and you can't really pick us apart. Like every, everything influences everything else within us. Totally. And we're all so unique, which is why I love these tools because they help us and they helped me get to this place where I do understand better than five years ago or 10 years ago or 15 years ago or 30 years ago who I am, maybe not 30 years ago, because then I would have been four and I probably knew myself pretty well. Um, (laughs) But they help us, they help us understand who we are, what makes us unique. And so we're not trying to constantly fit in somebody else's box, which is often the, whether it's with your body, (laughs) with your work, with your love life, (laughs) um, that can be a cause of so much strife. Yes, it, it, it sure can. Absolutely. Okay. So let's, let's talk about you before we get into, into what you do and all these tools as fascinating as they are, but I, I want to hear the you behind the story. So, you know, this podcast self-love ignited is all about telling the stories of people who have come from a place of not liking themselves, not loving themselves, not accepting who they are and really learning to love and embrace all these different parts of themselves. So Emily, why don't you Take us back to the beginning of your story. Where did your challenges with yourself begin? You know, Katie, I was reflecting on this before we got on because not too often am I asked to go all the way back. And sometimes your story feels so big. Like, where did it actually begin? Yeah. I think where it began is I remember feeling different as a kid. And I'm sure a lot of folks can relate to this in whatever way again, body size, what you liked to do, who you liked. Uh, But I just remember feeling different and I was definitely more sensitive than the other gals that I played with. And as a result, I got picked on. And I think that's really where it started. Um, In what started was me trying to be more like everyone else in order to fit in, in order to not be called out, in order to not feel whatever those feelings were when, when people again, pick on you. So I learned along the way, and I think this is also very much ingrained in 
many schooling systems is that there is one path to success. There's, there's like one way to be happy and healthy and to, yeah, be successful in, and I'm using that in air quotes for anyone listening to this. Uh, there's just one way to be successful. And I leaned into that and I was good at it. I was good at following instructions. I was good at school. <laughs> I was good at executing on that path. And I, looking back now and knowing what I know about astrology, I see like all of the Capricorn, which is like the hard worker of the Zodiac, how that really s served me in that sense until it didn't. Because I got to this place, like fast forward into my, my 20s, uh, coming out of college, degree in accounting, going to work for a big four uh, public accounting firm, doing yoga, running, like all of these things on the outside, I looked very healthy and very successful, but on the inside, something still felt off. I was still, uh, I think the, the like kind word would be seeking, but in many moments, it certainly looked like self-loathing mm -hmm. of why can't I just feel comfortable in my skin, in who I am? And what that propelled me into was physical health and well being. And I already had an innate like inclination towards this. As I said, I was a runner, I'd started doing yoga, but I went deeper into like vegan eating, um, training for half marathons and marathons, becoming a yoga teacher, even going so far as to become a certified health coach and making a big pivot in my career all from this place, I think of, of saying like, what's going to make me happy? What's going to make me feel like I have finally landed in who I am and I can like myself. And while this is an important part of my story uh, and I, I still love wellness, I know that that was just a gateway. Mm -hmm. And really what was like the, the changing point for me and where I started to see or not even see, feel real results on the inside uh, was being able to address the energetic, the emotional and the spiritual side of who I was, not just the physical or the 3D um, part of what I was putting out into the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I love, I love, first of all, I love that you can sort of go back and upon reflection, see that that's that sort of piece of like not belonging or not fitting in or feeling like you had to change like it's always been with you and mm -hmm. then as an adult you sort of came across all these tools and all these things and like that beautiful journey so how did you like the question that I really want to ask is one that I don't normally ask until later in the interview. But what I what I really want right. to ask is like Go there. <laughs> now, well, we're just we're just doing it. Why not? Why not? Um, would you say that now at this point in your life, like would you say that you love yourself? Do you identify with the term self-love, self-acceptance? What like where would you say you're at now? Definitely. I want to like come back to the term self-love because I think it's one that is hard to get, jump to from a place of, and I'm sure you, you talk about this with clients and, and your community, but it's hard to get like to make that jump to self-love yes. now. Yes. I definitely feel like I love myself. Um, does that mean that in every single moment I love the way I'm acting or I love the way I look or I love the way I'm being in relationship? No, but the deeper, um, I think what's, what's maybe like the next step or the in-between steps that I think are even more important mm -hmm. or just as important as the love is the acceptance and the understanding. Uh, and, comp and really compassion because there's always, we didn't, I don't believe we came onto this planet just to be perfect, you know, to be like the, the vision or the execution of perfection. We came in to have some struggle or some challenge, uh, like those little, the grit where the pearl for forms. And so I think that more than anything else, because there are always those pieces that that at least for me that I'm working on and life tends to bring up in new ways, <laughs> but I definitely have 
thousand percent better self-understanding, self-acceptance and self-compassion for when I am, when I do find myself in those more challenging moments. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. And you, you've answered it in the exact way of why I asked the question and why I wanted to <laughs> ask the question is because I like through my time doing this, I have realized that that term self-love, which I did not realize when I named this podcast, but I, I realize <laughs> yeah. now that it's a very polarizing term. It can be very triggering. And I think that's why that, that question and that conversation is an important one, because if you are sort of new to this idea of self-love or your relationship with self, and you're kind of just figuring it out, it's a big jump when you are in that place big of jump. self-loathing. It is like, it can be so much like, I'm never going to get there. It's absolutely impossible. That's not for me. So then you feel like you can't even try. And I ask that question to get the steps, your steps in your words, right? Like you said, there's like compassion and acceptance. And like, there's just, there's all these little pieces of the puzzle, which is the point. Yeah. 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 And I think that for me, yes, going to therapy, doing the deeper work, doing, doing all of the like shadow work and personal development, that certainly helps. Yes. And the thing that, that has been, well, I can't really point to one thing that, that was like the game changer, but certainly astrology and human design, these tools that help us get to know ourselves have been beyond supportive in my journey, which is then now why I offer them in my work, because right. I believe that they could help everyone. They can really help everyone in that process. It's like you said, there's a, it can be a big leap from self-loathing or even just like not feeling satisfied, not feeling like, you know, yourself, or, you know, where you're supposed to be, you know, your purpose to then being like, I love myself. I'm, I'm living my purpose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when we can have a tangible practice or a tool to study ourselves, not just journaling in the morning, which again can be helpful, not just meditation, but okay, what does my sun sign say about me? What does my astrological moon sign say about me? And how can I really digest that and integrate it and live my life from a place of understanding my unique design and, and flowing with that versus like I tried to do for so many years, putting myself in a box that might not fit me. Right. Or might not fit me anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I want to, I'm sure that there are people listening and I might be one of them who don't really know much <laughs> about human design. So if there's somebody listening who maybe has yeah. heard of it, but doesn't quite grasp the concept, can you just give us like a really brief uh, overview? Definitely. Yeah. So human design is a system akin to astrology, similar to astrology. You put in your birth time, date, and location, and you get a very complicated looking chart or map. And both astrology and human design, when you learn to read these charts, give you information about yourself, your soul's blueprint. And why I like to look at, and, and honestly, like I still sort of in ways think of myself as more of a beginner or like an advanced beginner. I know a lot more than a lot of folks, but I am certainly not like a, like a human design expert. There's right. so much that you can learn in these charts, but I like it as a complement to astrology because what I look at in astrology is the different parts of the psyche, the different uh, planets and what signs they fall in and how we can learn about the different parts of ourselves. Human design has that aspect too, but what I look at it for is it's very simple. The first few things that, that I would look at with someone are their type, strategy, authority, and profile. And this tells you how your energy works, how you're designed to make decisions, which we're all faced with so many every day, and what your both conscious and unconscious personality are uh, so that you can, which can sometimes speak to like your career or how people, um, how people perceive you, how you perceive yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, the story of human design is, is for, probably for another time, but I found it to be a nice compliment because it can provide us with slightly different information. Yeah. Yeah. And I can, 
as I'm listening to you sort of explain this, I can definitely understand how that could be a beautiful compliment to this, you know, this working in your relationship with yourself, because Mm -hmm. like you said, like it helps you understand yourself in a different way. It gives you more information. It gives you more to work with and may explain why you do things the way you do things or why you are different from somebody else. Right. So instead of just thinking like I am wrong or I am bad or I'm doing things like it doesn't make sense. You're like, Oh, like it gives you some, it can sort of make, make, give you some logical things to like some tangible things to work with instead of it just being a purely emotional thing, if that makes sense. And that's, and that's, what's been so helpful for me is Mm -hmm. that tangible, those tangible takeaways and the ability to say like, okay, yes, I might have these challenging points or these shadow points in my charts and I can see those and I can see how they play out. And I also have all of these beautiful pieces of myself, which we often don't celebrate, especially in the self-development world. And even I would say in like the self-love world, it's like love everything, Mm -hmm. love all of the pieces of yourself, you know, eat chocolate for breakfast, like, (laughs) but that you might not, you might not, but you can, but we can see both and integrate both and accept both the light and the shadow. Yeah. 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 When you were working through that, when you were using these tools in your own journey, did you work with a professional or was this like, did you dive into it yourself and sort of heal yourself while you learn the tools? Yeah, no, this is a great question. And the answer is a combination of both. And I'll also add like community. Okay. So when I first learned, started getting interested in astrology uh, and human design, astrology first, I've definitely done readings with professionals and usually at pivotal times in my life. And when I was first getting started, because there's so much you can learn. There's so much you can learn by yourself. And those readings can be super helpful reflections of of the things that you don't know to look for. Or if looking at a chart, because like I said, they're very complex. We are, we are multidimensional humans. So I've definitely done some readings and I continue to do them at, not at like a specific cadence, but again, like at pivotal times or if I'm looking for some different guidance but most of my learning and then teaching has come from a place of self-study and I'm very fortunate to have had a friend who you know I got we got into it at the same time so we could converse about these things because I do think it's it at least for me and that might be my design it might not be (laughs) everyone listening but I work well when I can digest and I can talk about information and I can also apply it to someone else besides myself. There's beauty in studying your own chart, but I also love astrology and human design because I look up the charts of all my loved ones. I look up all the charts of my clients now too, but it helps me see, oh, my Mercury is in Pisces. This is how I, my style of communication, her Mercury is in Scorpio and I feel that communication style differently, or she's a manifesting generator, which is human design terminology. And I feel that energy differently. So it's like that lived experience. And, you know, it's been at this point, I I was looking back on my blog and I think I wrote a blog post about mercury retrograde in 2015. So (laughs) this was a long time ago. Um, And it's definitely taken, taken time to do it this way, but I think that it's been more impactful because I have a lived experience of it versus just textbook knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And leads perfectly into my next question, which is um, now that your, as your relationship with yourself changes, as your understanding of yourself, the compassion that you have for yourself, as that shifts and evolves and becomes, you know, more on the side towards love and acceptance, how has that impacted the other relationships in your life? Those with family members, those with friends, those with partners, like how, how have those shifted? Yeah, well, I would say they're infinitely deepened and improved Mm -hmm. because I can show up not one, not feeling needy, not feeling like I need someone else to understand, accept, 
love me. I still mm-hmm. want those things, but I don't need them yeah. because I can give that to myself. Yeah. And that really is like a, a healthy relationship is when people, when two people can, or three, you know, we'll talk about two people, two people can show <laughs> up and connect from a place of something beyond just, you know, need. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's more desire or a shared interest or a shared vision. So that certainly, it's certainly improved my relationships. And it's also improved my relationships because I struggle and maybe other people struggle with this too. I struggle with uh, when, when folks act differently from me, when they, when they show up in a way that I wouldn't show up. I take it personally, or I can take it personally. I've taken it personally in the past, but now through the lens of my own work and learning, oh, we all are different. How they react, how they interact, again, how they communicate is different from me. And I might not understand that. I might not like it, but I can at least say it's not me right. uh, and, and better hold or not hold expectations of others' behaviors based mm-hmm. on my own uh, design. Yeah, yeah. That sounds, just as you're speaking, that sounds like such a, like just an allowing and an understanding and a, like just less judgmental and just more open to humans and all of our incredible similarities and differences and nuances that every single one of us has like and when you're approaching relationships that way because you're approaching yourself that way like that would just change it would change everything like you said it like changes everything and it deepens it like how could it not how could it not yeah 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 uh okay tell us about how your journey your self-love journey has impacted your journey to entrepreneurship Mm, I love this question so much. (laughs) And I've been one to say that entrepreneurship is like one of the greatest spiritual journeys or journeys that you could go on. And I would also say that entrepreneurship, at least for me and for pretty much every client that I've worked with, it brings up your stuff, not even just clients, my colleague friends too. It it brings up your stuff. And so your tools for self-love are whatever they may be, whether you, you know, you love astrology too, or you decide to go into astrology too. um, All of those tools become so much more important. And I would say, especially in the field of wellness, of health, of personal development, uh, because we, we can face this when we're challenged with things. And I've no, I experienced this myself when we're still working through stuff, we can feel imposter syndrome when we show up and try and teach others uh, about whether it's healthy eating or moving your body or loving yourself. And you're like, well, I haven't totally figured this out myself. And that's not the point. You can still help people even if you haven't totally quote unquote figured it out yourself. But the practices for connecting in and taking care of yourself are ultimately more important, not maybe not more important, but like, I just feel like they, they're super important when you step out into any new role, Mm. uh, which, which often when folks become entrepreneurs, they do. So for me, I, it was interesting because like I said, I got really into health and wellness and then I made it my job. I left the corporate accounting world. I got my yoga teacher certification, got my health coach certification, started teaching yoga, uh, leading workshops and classes specifically around gut health, energy, and, and really like intuitive eating and body love. And that, again, it was important for me. And it, and I know that I helped people at the time. And also it brought up a whole new level of my own disordered, uh, body image and, and the things that I was still working through with my gut, uh, my digestion and eating, you know, like eating and being a woman. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I think that I don't know if I would be at the same place that I am today 
with self-acceptance and self-love if I hadn't gone on that entrepreneurial journey, because I was forced to look at that stuff as it came up, uh, as I was also coaching others through it. Yeah. Yeah. And I love, like, I love that you say that because, you know, I've heard, you know, so many people throughout the years of being a business owner of this entrepreneurial journey, people being like, I didn't think it would be this hard. Why do I feel like it's always like, there's always my stuff. I thought I was starting a business to help other people or to like serve other people. It's not about me. Why is it, you know, like, why does it always come back to me? And it's, I think at the beginning, it can feel really frustrating, but as you understand that it's that exactly right, things are brought up and it pulls things out in you. And then people reflect it back. There's a mirroring thing. And it's, if you are not willing to up-level yourself and work on yourself, you can only take your clients so far. And if, yeah. and if you want to keep growing professionally, it requires you to grow personally. They go hand in hand. You can't really separate the two, I don't think. Yeah. yeah. And th- there's a few things too that I want to point out because they come up, like, I know I felt this and now they come up in sessions with, with clients who are like, a few, like where I was a few years ago uh, or when I just started out. And one is, like I said, like you can still help people even if you're on your journey yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, And there's often a lot of, like I mentioned, imposter syndrome that comes up about that. Like, oh my gosh, I'm still binge eating every once in a while or I still look in the mirror and I'm not feeling great about what I see. How on earth could I help someone else? And the truth is you could. And I would even argue that, you might be in a better position to help someone than, you know, 10 years down the line when you're in a totally different place, as long as you're doing that work yourself. Because if you're not doing it yourself, then you're just going to be constantly triggered in, in situations and be pulled out of the present, which is one of the most important skills for coaching, uh, pulled out of the present into, oh my gosh, how am I going to fix this for myself? If you don't have that time in your day and your week that you're not even fixing, but working on yourself. Mm -hmm. So you can certainly still, you can certainly still help people. And just echoing what you said around entrepreneurship being, being tough. uh, That is so true. That is so true. And I didn't expect it. (laughs) when I was going into it, I mean, I was also like pretty young and didn't have anyone around me that was doing it. So they couldn't say, Emily, like, you know, just not, not caution, but just FYI, like all this, this is a a journey, a real journey that you're going to go on. Um, So I say that not to deter anyone because it's also, at least for me, been one of the most fulfilling and personally, uh, yeah, personally fulfilling uh, experiences of my life. Not personally fulfilling, like pers- like development personally. Yeah, I've developed as a as a person, as a spirit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't say that to deter anyone, but just to know, uh, it's it's a whole different paradigm. It's a whole identity shift and my advice, and I give this to when folks reach out to me and they say like, what would you do? Mm-hmm. You know, if you're just starting out, what's your advice is get support, Yeah, get support. Yeah. And that can look like, again, if you're coming to this from a background of having a, dis- if you're, if you're going into coaching from a background of having disordered body image, or you're feeling still like you're a yoga teacher and you're still working on some digestion things or, or what have you get support. Um, get support for your business too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think that's one thing, you know, yes, entrepreneurship can be, can be tough. And I don't, I don't like using that word because like, eh, it's not a bad thing, right? Like it is growth. It's like stress is what makes us grow and evolve. And it is really positive in so many ways. Uh, But one of the most amazing things that you just touched on is the support that is available is that when you're suddenly in this world and you are surrounded by other service providers, other coaches, other people who are doing nutrition or doing yoga or do whatever, whatever their thing is, it's like you're all on your own journeys, but you're also all doing it together. And it's this really like empowering, amazing thing to be part of. I don't know, like it's, just, it's incredible. And it's something that is really hard to describe, I think, unless you're in it, unless you've experienced yeah. it, yeah. 
Well, and also too, in the world that we live in, which is very social media and beautiful websites and very like, uh, we have a lot more quote unquote insight into people's lives and their work when really we are only seeing a fraction of the picture, no matter how authentic they're being. It is so, it's even more crucial to have people that you can talk to offline and hear, yeah, I'm, I'm challenged with that too. Yeah. Or I had a, I had a failed launch, quote unquote, failed launch too. Um, so yeah, just encouraging people. And I'm seeing that in my own life in a new way, as I step into becoming a mother, Mm -hmm. another huge, like identity shift, uh, ego journey and seeing how powerful it is to connect with other moms and moms to be and women who work with moms for for that support because this is something I've never done before. Yeah. 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 I I have heard people say that parenting is the number one personal personal development journey and entrepreneurship is number two. So you've already done number two and now you are <laughs> you're, you're getting ready for the other one. You're getting ready for the big one. So yeah. should be a breeze for you, right? Right? <laughs> Fingers <crossed>. Maybe. <laughs> but I at least know like I have my tools and I I yeah. I echo that in the way that I felt leaving corporate and stepping into this role of running my own business, very much the the like vibrational energetic resonance feels like what I'm doing now. Yeah. Because like I said, it's an identity shift and it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother layer of being. So yeah. I'm confident in my in my tools. <laughs> nice. Nice. I love it. I love that. Emily, if there's somebody listening who is or watching who is maybe at a point in their journey where you used to be, maybe they feel like, you know, they, they just, they don't belong or they feel like they don't understand parts of themselves. So there's just something, you know, they're, they're not accepting parts of themselves, whatever that happens to be. Um, Is there uh, an exercise? Is there a practice? Is there something that you would recommend as like a step one, as a beginning for them? Yeah. Uh, So many things. (laughs) But one, just the reminder that there are people out there, if you're not feeling like you belong, if you're not feeling like you're connected to folks who understand you or, or even like you, are like you, then I just want to share the like affirmation that there are and you deserve to be connected with those people. And so if it's like the permission to unsubscribe, unfollow, distance yourself from anyone who's making you feel less than Mm -hmm. in, in pursuit of connecting with more like-minded folks or folks who can help you align more deeply with your spirit and your soul. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the advice to seek support only you can know what sort of support you need in the moment. For me, in different moments, it's been therapy, it's been coaches, it's been spiritual teachers, it's been physical, like body worker healers. So only you can know what that is for you in the moment. And I encourage you to go in and ask yourself, what sort of support do I need? And then seek that out and know that it might be just like it is it can be challenging to put yourself outside of your comfort zone. And we can, it can be challenging to change your life, to change who you're friends with, to change where you work, to do the research and find the teacher, the healer that, that is best for you. Uh, But in my experience, it's always worth it. It's always worth it. Mm. And you can also like ask the universe for support in that, like, I'm going to do my part can you please show me or bring to me the people that I'm meant to connect with? Yes, 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 a hundred percent. I agree with all of that. I will just second everything that you've just said. <laughs> yeah, no, that, I mean, that's beautiful. And I think, you know, was, when you're at the beginning of this journey, it can feel lonely and it can feel overwhelming and the unfollowing, unsubscribing, the stepping away from what doesn't feel good and stepping towards what does and asking for help is absolutely massive, absolutely massive. So Emily, as we are getting ready to wrap up, is there anything else 
that feels important for you to share? Is there anything else on your heart? Is there anything else that wants to come out? Any last bits of wisdom? Um, and also where can people find you? Please tell us both of those things. Yeah, any last bits of wisdom or anything else I want to share? I don't think so. I think we've covered no. so much. Yeah. And I think this just echoes what I just said, but you deserve to feel good in yourself and who you're connected with. And ultimately at the end of the day, you are your own best guide. So listening to the, the places you need to go, the people you want to seek out, the, the more that you do that, the easier it becomes. Mm -hmm. The more that you trust yourself and trust whatever that calling is, or even a question, maybe you don't know what the calling is. You have a question, like follow that, follow your, your intuition, your curiosity, your inspiration, and your joy. Hello. So if uh, I am, I am currently on the Instagram, everyone can find me at Emily Nahazel. I'm sure we'll link that since yep. that last name is a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a YouTube channel so folks can connect with me there. And of course, I have a website uh, where you can learn more about me and my work and uh, what's going on with that. And it is emilynahazel.com. Wonderful. Thank you. And yes, I'll make sure to link to all of those. So it is nice and simple to click through. Um, and I mean, Emily, I have, I have had a look at your website and on social media and I love what you're doing. Um, and I really, I, I just, I want to thank you for coming on today. I want to thank you for sharing your story with us, sharing some of your amazing experiences and your insights. Um, I just, I love what you're doing in this world. And I really, I just, I really appreciate you. So thank you. Thank you. And really thank you for holding this space, because as I said to you, I think before we started recording, sharing our stories is so important and they come out differently in different times. So this has been uh, a beautiful experience for me as well. Oh, awesome. Thank you.